you guys. I realized after I made my Fermenting 101 video, when I talked about supplies, I did not show you what those were. Some of you who are familiar with fermenting may know what I was talking about, but a lot of you who may be brand new to it probably had no clue what in the world I was talking about. So I wanted to give you, um, show you what, what, what I was talking about, the supplies that, what they look like. The first thing is a crock, uh, excuse me, a vessel that could be a crock or for me what I use are mason jars glass jar, really any glass jar. This is, um, this works really great. I love, this has been working for everything. But as you can see back there, I've got my eggs, my sauerkraut, and my pickles, and then my fermenting book by Mason Tops. Uh, it works, that's what I use, it's great. The next thing you'll need are weights. And this came with the Mason Top fermenting kit. We've got the um, pickle, uh, the pucks, p pickle pucks. They, uh, so your weights to hold your vegetables so they're not exposed to the oxygen. So submerge them in the brine. Now you've got this older one that's kind of, you know, this one, or you've got the better version one. They, they have this one. I love it so much better. Then some sort of an airlock mechanism. Again, with the fermenting kit, we've got these pickle pipes. They are, you know, they they're, they look like nipples. They've got the little hole in here. It's probably too blurry. Um, but they have been working really great. So you just put them on top of your jar. After you're done with everything, you just put it on top like this. Um, and then you'll need a, uh, uh, a lid to screw this on. And then you just screw it on and there you go. So that's what works for me. And then while the CO2 is building up, the gas is getting released through this hole right here. And it's great. You don't have to burp it or anything like that. You also need a muslin towel. And this is optional, really. Muslin towel or a cheesecloth because it just helps. So that way, it's another way for me to help submerge everything. All any floaties at the top of the brine get their, get their, get them down in there so they do not ruin my ferment. And sometimes if you have floaties, it may not ruin your ferment. You just don't know. Every ferment is so different. Sometimes I've had floaties and it's been fine. Sometimes I, there is nothing on top, just clean and it didn't work out so great. So it just depends. Every ferment is different. Once you're done fermenting, you decide when that is by your taste. You just take off the ring, take off the pickle pipe, and you just put the lid on and put it in the fridge and it's ready to go and it is good for months in your fridge. Another thing, um, things, so I think this is the last thing, it's just um, some sort of a masher, packer. You don't have to have this again, this came with my fermenting kit. You do not have to have this. In fact, my husband's mother uses a fire bat. Oh, <laughs> this thing that had a finish which she sanded off and she also sanded off the edge of it so it was smooth to pat down and she coated it with some uh, a good natural oil that's really good for wood and it was as simple as that it wasn't anything fancy you didn't have to be a you know mason top fancy fermenting kit type of a you know pounder it's just the idea of something like this so that's it